Well, good morning, Patrick. Good morning, Gobi. Uh, I wanted to ask, first question I wanted to ask you is, you know, you've been doing this for many years. You've been doing functional medicine for many years. And I wanted to know what attracted you to functional medicine and what kind of keeps you continued to be inspired even today? Well, there's a, there's a short answer and a long answer, but you know, for me, when I was in medical school, you know, I really thought that I was going to be learning about how to optimize health and well-being uh, as a way, you know, to be able to help with health and, and, and wellness and, mm. and avoiding illness. And it wasn't what happened. Um, but I, in my bookstore, you know, stumbled upon two books, one on nutritional biochemistry that made a lot of sense. And another, uh, a book by Dr. Jeff Bland in 1984. Um, and I read that and I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. This makes sense. Uh, other people are thinking in this way. And that sort of began my journey of looking at clinical prevention and then being in clinical practice, but focusing on health and well-being, looking at other health systems. But it was then in the mid 90s, uh, as I was in practice and had had experiences on faculty in the Department of Family Medicine at University of New Mexico and working with uh, indigenous peoples, the, the Pueblo peoples in New Mexico and the on the, the native Alaskans, the Yupik people on the Bering Sea, where I saw, you know, the how um, the the important use of the Western medicine and the acute care medicine, but that the depth of chronic disease was just so tremendous um, and that other things needed to be done. And, and at that point I turned back to Dr. Bland and, and began to learn the idea of functional medicine that just made so much sense to me because it was like a, a modern day manifestation of, you know, five element Chinese medicine or Ayurveda or Tibetan medicine of integrating uh, all of these elements together and really focusing on the root cause. And that's, uh, you know, that's, it, it got me. And, and then even better was as I started to do it, it worked. It helped people. And, uh, you know, so I was caught. How did you get connected to, to yeah. functional medicine? So, I mean, so there were, there are a lot of different, a lot of different reasons, but I would say like, just like a story here, my, my mother was actually, she was diagnosed with uh, ovarian cancer and uh, she went through chemotherapy. She went through surgery and she did really well. She, she actually went into remission. And I remember having that appointment because I, I tried to accompany her like to all the visits. I remember the last visit with the, or, or one of the visits with the oncologist and, and him saying, uh, you're in remission, you know, and, and my mom asking, well, what do we do next? Like, what do I do now? And he said, nothing. You know, he said, we, we wait, <laughs> you know, we wait every, you know, for three months and we do another scan. I guess they call it watchful waiting, you know, in oncology. And uh, and to me, I thought, well, well, why wait for the disease to come back? Isn't there something more that that she can do? Like something more like active waiting. And so I started doing some research. I started looking into things and that's kind of what where I found functional medicine. I, I, I found a lot of different like articles. I found the IFM website. And I took a GI module, which uh, Patrick, you were one of the actual lecturers. You were very inspirational. So like, I, uh, I started taking some of these modules. I took that module first. And then I thought, you know what? Like I need to become certified in this. And so I continued down that path. I took my test and uh, uh, just at the end of last year uh, received my certification. And so, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I'm very excited. I have my, my certificate right here. <laughs> I'm going to put it up here on the wall next to my other uh, diplomas. But, you know, really excited to, to really start my journey uh, in functional medicine and follow in the footsteps of, uh, of people like you. Well, thanks so much. So when um, when you started medical school, what, what was your what was your focus? What what drew you to medical school and and how would you approach, you know, others who are going into medical school? What what advice would you give them now? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, as I went through medical school, obviously you go through so many different specialties and and I found, you know, what really excited me the most was was uh, the relationship with with the patient, like the 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 interaction that that you know I would have with them, 
Uh, and, you know, I, I got into palliative medicine. I just, you know, my patients, uh, you know, I, I feel that my patients with cancer are at times going through uh, the most difficult times in their life. And so, uh, you know, they all have different experiences and different ways to approach that. And, uh, you know, for me, it was, it's, it's, uh, it's a privilege to be a part of their journey. And so uh, I would tell people, you know, I would, I would tell people who are going into medical school or trying to find a feel like, you know, I do a lot of teaching now, you know, find something that's meaningful, find something that gives you some, some happiness at the end of the day. I mean, I, I'd say I, every day I learn something from my cancer patients uh, uh, as they fight, as they, as they go through their journey. And so uh, that's how I found myself in, in palliative medicine and, and uh, you know, with functional medicine, I've just, it's opened up this whole new set of modalities for me to, to take care of these patients. Uh, I imagine you use like a lot of these modalities. Do you see a lot of cancer patients or do you take care of a lot yourself? I'm, um, you know, after the recent experience I've had with cancer, uh, you know, as a cancer patient, uh, I've started seeing, I've, 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 um, I've been, you know, seeing more cancer patients. Uh, It's been interesting because I've never, um, placed myself in a situation of trying to be an integrative oncologist, you know, of, of really being, you know, the, the cancer doc. But what I found was that, you know, learning to use the tools of functional medicine to be the healthiest patient I can be, in this case, the healthiest cancer patient. I can be really helped to be able to uh, optimize the the treatments that I received and, and help me to do just as you said with your mom of like, okay, so now I've got no evidence of disease. You know, it was a you know, stage, stage four laryngeal cancer and, you know, two years out now and, and yet it's still an active journey. You know, it's like what I'm doing with nutrition, what I'm doing to support my immune system, what I'm doing to deal with micrometastases, what I'm doing with my connection to, you know, passion in my life and, and learning, well, what are the, the, the gifts, the lessons of transformation mm-hmm. that, that cancer helped to give me? Um, so I do, you know, work now with cancer patients to, to work to optimize their health and well-being. And what we find is that, you know, they go through and their oncologists are, are looking at them and saying, hmm, you're not acting like as sick as other cancer patients. You're not having the same kinds of side effects and problems, you know. Um, and some of them are saying, what, what are you doing? And that's pretty cool to me. Yeah, that, that is great. I mean, you know, I find like in palliative medicine, we have, you know, we, you know, we treat the symptoms and in our clinic, we, you know, we see a lot of cancer patients. In fact, cancer pain, cancer symptom management is primarily what we see. And uh, what I've realized, you know, it, it, we aggressively treat symptoms in palliative medicine, but I find that at times I'll be, you know, if I, if, like, for example, pain, I aggressively treat pain. Sometimes I cause another symptom, you know, like increase the pain medication, I'll cause constipation or, you know, or, or sedation. And so uh, for me, I realized like offering as many different modalities as I can has uh, been beneficial. So, you know, someone who has brachial plexopathy can benefit from a nerve block and therefore, uh, mitigate the use of, of some medication and functional medicines rate right, in that I, I have more modalities now that I can offer to, to instead of just maybe increasing another medication, I can actually go more upstream. And like you said, change the, almost the environment, the, the environment that that cancer is living in. Um, and I haven't been doing it as many years as you have, uh, you know, I ha- but I'm looking forward to incorporating more into my practice and seeing those results that, that you're seeing or have seen over, over the years. Yeah, I'm curious too, do, do you ever utilize like supplements like for mitochondrial support or for microbiome support? And, and then, you know, does that, what do providers or oncologists say about that if, if you do? Well, it, the idea of our, our, our diets are sufficient to be able to give all the nutrients that we need, mm-hmm. um, pro- probably not at this point in time. You know, we find that there's been a, you know, the data tells us a 35 to 
50%, in some cases, 70% reduction in the nutrient density uh, and the, 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 the vitamins and minerals that are present in our soil, uh, sure. in our foods that we're eating. And so even just eating something that is organic is not necessarily sufficient. Um, so the, the idea of, do we need some additional support? You know, I look at patients from a, you know, evaluate their nutritional status, macronutrients and micronutrients. You know, I, I focus more, you know, the baseline diet is going to tend to be a, a more uh, plant-based or plant-focused uh, diet that is going to have a rich diversity of, of varying um, fruits and especially vegetables in it. Uh, I may need to help the, the microbiome. I may look at the microbiome to be able to say what's going on, particularly now as, as we have opportunities for immunotherapies and we find that those, yeah. those immunotherapies and cancer are going to work or have side effects depending upon what's happening in the microbiome. Like the data on that's really clear. It's yeah. amazing. And so we need to have the right balance in our microbiome and we need to be able to support that. So developing tools to be able to evaluate nutritional status, to evaluate the microbiome, to help those processes along. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what, that's how I'm going to support individuals in the process along the way. Um, but it's targeted. It's not, uh, it's not a, um, it's not a grab bag and it's not just throwing lots of stuff at it. It's really sure. trying to personalize in a, in a, precision medicine kind of way. How do we help this individual with what they have going on? Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, and again, sometimes it just requires a conversation with when I'm talking to an oncologist or an internist or, or a gastroenterologist, you know, mm -hmm. and we'll go into, well, let's, let's talk about the microbiome. You know, let's talk about the microbiome as it relates to disease and inflammation and other imbalances. And, and let's talk about it, you know, with the oncologist in relationship to immunotherapy. And, you know, they get it. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm aware of that, but I don't know how to, how to change it or modify it in a controlled way. It's like, oh, well, here's how I'm doing that, you know, and we're still early in our learning curve on it, you know, but we actually have ways to be able to improve the overall diversity of the microbiome. Um, and it's not just about throwing a bunch of probiotics Sure. Uh, but rather using foods and using prebiotics and, and using other kinds of approaches, including decreasing stress that will have an impact yeah. on the microbiome. So the pieces fit together in a, in a beautiful way. And I feel like we have the, you know, the opportunity, like where I see functional medicine moving in the future is mm. in a direction that is, it becomes, you know, slowly incorporated into the standard of care. Now I can feel, uh, I'll use a historical um, perspective. Like I could, when I was teaching about uh, the gut and digestion and inflammation and the, and the microbiome 20 years ago, you know, and I look back at what we in functional medicine were teaching and talking about at that point in time, that is becoming the standard of care within a recognition of what's going on, say with inflammatory bowel disease or with irritable bowel syndrome. And I could feel resentful, like, wow, they didn't listen to me back then. But, <laughs> right, you know, right. I, but it's like, I'm really glad that there's this evolution and that, you know, in the, the, you know, the, the march of, of science and the march of, of clinical understanding moves forward in a way that we listen. And the mm -hmm. things that work will be incorporated. And so things that we've approached, you know, looking at the use of, you know, omega-3 fats and methylation processes and, 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 and plant-based antioxidants and healing permeability issues and altering the gut microbiome, all of those are now conversations that, you know, you and I can have with many different specialists. Right. And, and, you know, 20 years ago, it was, it wasn't looked at that way. It was looked at as though it's a, it's a black box and it's maybe some kind of voodoo, 
you know, the work we've been able to do at the Center for Functional Medicine at the Cleveland Clinic, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to demonstrate improvements in, in outcomes, uh, both in individual settings and in group settings, you know, are part of the process of being able to demonstrate that there's a value in this kind of systems-based approach. And we're going to continue to show that. So, you know, what do you see as, you know, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the next wave of, of, of the dream or of, uh, of where functional medicine goes in the future? Yeah. And, and first I would just want to say, thank you for your persistence. <laughs> you know, you had all these great ideas and I appreciate not giving up on them and, and, and making it easier, I guess, uh, for, for us practitioners, you know, our, us new practitioners. So thank you. Um, you know, going into the future, I, I just feel, you know, functional medicine, you know, we're, our healthcare system is searching for so many answers, you know, again, like we're, we're waiting for disease. We, we find symptoms, we find disease, and then we throw medications or interventions. We treat the symptom you know, rather than going more upstream. And I think that's where, I, I think functional medicine, like that's where it turned, turned things for me, you know, understanding, well, you know, it's not, it's, you know, one diagnosis could have multiple different causes, right? Inflammation, stress, like, you know, diet, lifestyle, so many different things. And, and that there are, there are a lot of other things that we can offer and educate our patients about. And, uh, uh, if we can do that effectively, uh, as you know, as functional medicine has taught me, uh, I think we're going to have much more success in treating disease and, and treating, you know, we talk a lot today about cancer, but, but of course, treating cancer, but but even other diseases as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I, like I said, I just, I was just certified at the end of last year, but I'm really excited at this, this kind of almost like a turning point in my career. Uh, uh, and incorporating these modalities and, and this, uh, I guess, philosophy, treatment modality, whatever you may say, uh, into the care of my patients. Because at the end of the day, I want, that's what I want is, is good care for my patients and for them to have good outcomes. And I think uh, this is going to, you know, help me do that. So uh, what's, the, what's the future of functional medicine? I, I you know, I don't, I don't know, but I, I do think uh, I mean, I think it's, it's, it seems to be gaining much more traction because of uh, people like you and your, you know, your colleagues. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's, it, you know, I bet in five, 10 years, maybe from now, it, it'll be a mainstream, you know, it'll be mainstream. It'll be, it'll be a big part of the care that we provide patients. That's my hope.